roughness, I'm guessing this is a laminar flow case, okay? Because if it were turbulent, then we'd need to know the relative roughness. We don't have anything on how rough the pipe is, so we don't have what we need to calculate relative roughness. So remember, this friction factor 64 over the Reynolds number or some function of two non-dimensional numbers. Like I said, I don't see any information in the problem that gives us this. So I'm guessing it's so I'd say what we need to do is So which problem are you doing right now? I am doing three. Okay. to get the velocity Okay, once I know the velocity, and I plug it into the equation for the Reynolds number with the given kinematic viscosity to get the Reynolds number of 115. So it's laminar flow. Should I put page numbers on these? So the, uh, my solution uh, deviates, but what I would do is, now that I've got the Reynolds number, I go 
and calculate friction factor Here, like that? Yeah, I bet the solution, but they go about it in a different way. Uh, so, right, they go to the laminar flow equation to get the change in pressure. So I, I wouldn't do that. I would. There is an equation that you can use to relate that delta P. To um, Q and other things. Um, instead, I'm going to do it in a way that's similar to how I would solve it if it's turbulent flow. That is, get the friction factor. Big number. And from there, then I find the head loss. And I suppose that what the, um, okay, it does give us four meters between that, yeah. So I would do uh, 5.818. less than one, right? I'm not sure what's, I must have not put in 115. 0.557. See, this is why I don't get hundreds. set up an energy equation to find uh, the difference in, well, we, we'll see, but I, then I would use that to um, get the difference in pressures and then a manometer problem to get the uh, H. All right, so 0.557 or Yes, I got, oops, yeah, slightly different number this time. I got 9.167 this time. And 
going. Um, as you look at the manometer or the, the pipe, I'd say um, location one is the top, and location two is the bottom. are going to be the same. V1 and V2 are the same, so that's going to be the same term on each side of the energy equation, so we can we cannot include it. Okay, see what I've done? V1 squared over 2g equals V2 over 2g, so we're just going to leave it out. And that's V2 over gamma plus zero, we put our data. So that gives us an equation plus the head loss due to friction. All right. So, um, move that over and you get And we need the uh, specific weight. So that would be difference in pressures from location one, which is the top, and then I would um, say, okay, we've got two pressures that we know now, and we can use that to find H, so we're, we're free to one, this P1 minus P2, so I'll just say, P2 is zero. So um, then P1 is all right, and then I can say. Um, So I'd say P1 um, plus, it started location P1 and then goes to the top of the manometer. That's our first jump through the fluid. All right, so we're going to jump through and we're going to end up at location P2. Um, so the pressure you want is the pressure you know. So I'm doing it like that. The pressure you want is the pressure you know plus the changes in pressure. All right, so pressure you want, we start at P1 and then go a distance X, some unknown 
um, distance plus h and we're going through the manometer so that's the distance times uh, the unit weight which is unit weight of water times um, specific gravity is Okay, that gets us to the top of the manometer, or the, well, it, the top of the manometer fluid, and then we go minus H, and we must need the, it's in mercury, or no? 1.3, SGM is 1.3. What's that last thing that it's telling us? I think that's five meters. Oh. oh, it does give us the L there, yeah. I thought that was four meters. Why did I think that was four meters? Yeah, I just. Oh, you did you use? Is it maybe? Oh, I, am I using the value on my? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm using the value on my piece of paper here, and that's a little different. My sheet here says four. Uh, okay. So I'm gonna get an answer for my value of L equals four. Okay. Yeah, that's the challenge of right. So I put that in the L. Okay. And so um, I have jumped down x plus h, and then jumped back up minus h. And what's my specific gravity? Is my specific gravity the same? Yes, 1.3. All right, so that gets me to the top of the manometer fluid. And then I jump. Uh, okay, yeah, this is needing a figure. I do need to know that. Okay, and I had said that this distance, since we don't know exactly where that is, um, I said that that was x. And then the question is, what's the difference between these two elevations? Um, see. This is drawn. Uh, 
Um, let's see how. Okay, okay. So if this is zero, then that's minus four. with uh, geometry here because you're going down a distance um, it shouldn't matter how the vertical location of the manometer it could be lower or higher but it does mean the difference between the between the top of the manometer and the location one, that does change. So I think for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to assume that the, uh, the top of the manometer fluid on the left is uh, right here, okay? Uh, does that does that work? Let's see. Yeah. Um, no, no, no. I think I'm struggling with this to see how this the geometry works. Then I would come down that much. Oh, yeah, okay, that'll work. That'll work. So, yeah, yeah, so I'm, the way I'm doing this is I'm just assuming that, okay? So that this, um, this ought to be my four. All right, yeah, that'll work, that'll work because then the unknown here becomes known. And the idea is, is that it's not important the absolute location of the top and the bottom of the manometer. You know that they're H apart, but What's important is you know where it is so that you can um, so that you can fill in the numbers in our um, equation for the, the change in pressures. So I went four plus H through the oil, and now I'm going minus H. Uh, through the manometer fluid. And then that has to be equal to P2. Okay. And then that gives us an equation for, we know what P1 and P2 is. We know that this is 
and that gives us an equation for solving for H. Okay. So, um, 44 plus 40. And so then we Yes, and that's the, the answer they got. Okay. Whew. That's not easy. Um, yeah, the, the tough part of it, you know, I, I can tell you um, that on the test, you're definitely not going to have to solve a manometer problem uh, once you figure out what the head loss due to friction is. Okay? So the last part of this problem was um, doing that. So let me go back and review what we did here. Over A. 
and then found the Reynolds number with that equation, saw that it was laminar, and then from there went found the friction factor. Okay? Found the friction factor. Plugged our known friction factor in to get the head loss due to friction. And then Velocities were equal, so we used that simpler version of the energy equation. That gave us the difference in pressures, and then from there, knowing the difference in location one and location two pressures, we used that. And what I was saying is that. Um, I, if, if you just take this part of the manometer and moved it down and up by a distance, it's not going to change your results because the amount of pressure you're adding on one side by lengthening the, is going to be the same as that it's being aver aver added on the other side. And so what I chose to do is just said, okay, let's make this manometer so the top of the manometer over here is at elevation two. And so then the first jump I made from the pressure you want, P2, is the pressure you know, P1, was I jumped down four plus H to there. Then I jumped up um, an, an H, but did it through the manometer fluid. And then that pressure here is the pressure there. So that's and that's what gave me the equation for H. That, that's a, a, um, not an easy problem. I could see why. You asked for help with it. Okay. Anything, um, any additional questions I can clap? Number five. Number five, and yeah, yeah. I am happy to keep going uh, if you and I would plan to do so, as long as the person that, who asked for number five, did we have a number five here, a suggestion for? Yeah. So as long as Liam stays here, um, I'm going to do number five. I know that he's made no. Made no moves to the door. <laughs> okay, cool. This is a um, this I think is a uh, relatively simple um, design problem because we're calculating the diameter of pipe. Okay, so we know that change in pressure and the length well, we know it's commercial steel horizontal pipe. Okay, so we're going to Does somebody know what the epsilon is for that? Can we get So we would just look that up in a table in the text Point three zeros, point three zeros, 
Zero, zero, zero. Zero point zero zero zero. One five. One five is that feet? Inches? Yeah. Feet, feet. Okay. All right. And we're also going to need this. Uh, Can you move the camera? Oh. Yeah, so this is commercial steel. And what happens is as it, um, the water gets colder, you get a larger pressure drop, I believe. I think the kinematic viscosity. It's 1.407 times 10 to negative 5. 1.407 times 10 to the negative 5. Okay. That's feet squared per second. Yeah. Okay, so we know this, and then we know L is uh, Oh, it's just saying that uh, the change in pressure over a particular length. I think log for a little bit. This one says one psi per 150 feet. We're also going to need uh, gamma at 50 degrees. 62. Oh, did you want it? Or? Yeah, I'm going to use, oh. use that too, yeah. 62. Yeah. 0.41 pounds per cubic feet. Pounds per cubic foot, right? Okay. Okay. And then, so we're given all of this. And we want to uh, find D. All right. So, um, oh, and it gives us a Q too, right? Yeah, it's 500 gallons per minute. Okay. All right, so I get, um, Q is 500 over 7.48 over 60. That's what I do first is get the Q in cubic feet per second. thing to do, which is to convert that delta P into head loss, okay? Because imagine we just have a length of pipe that's horizontal, so the Z's are the same and the V's are the same, and the difference in pressure is going to be equal to the head loss due to friction, all right? So, just to, or the difference in pressure heads. So this is equal to that and that's equal to that. So we can just cancel out these Oops, sorry, cancel out those and say that P1 minus P2 over gamma is the head loss due to friction. Given what this difference in pressure is, it's 1 psi, which will convert to pounds per square foot.
and divide by the uh, specific weight, 62.41. Yep. 2.31. 2.31. Okay. So that's our head loss due to friction. So that's our limiting head loss due to friction. We can't have any more than that. And so we have to find a height that will supply that Q, that Q, with that head loss due to friction. All right. So this is a. Uh, um, Type 3 problem, the ones where you don't know either the relative roughness or the well, we can write equations for that. So that That's generally how you start. Okay, because and it's convenient in these problems, we could, if we wanted, might make uh, we don't know the diameter, so it doesn't make sense. Um, we should write, I was going to say we could rewrite the Q in terms of V and D, but we don't know the D, so it's better to write our equation in terms of Q. Okay, so that's F L V e squared V e to the fifth I squared G. This is the other version of the Darcy Weisbach equation where we substituted that substitution. Okay. And so that gives us a way to get an equation for D as a function of everything else. to get D in terms of the things that were given and uh, yeah and the F that we get. Alright? And it's convenient to separate out the F because we're going to iterate on the F. Alright? So I'll do that. I'll say D is a L U squared H F I squared G Okay, and that's a good equation for solving iteratively. Alright, 
So, let's get that. Oh, and then where you start, the suggested f start is f equals point zero three. Okay, but um, putting in the other things. about 0 0.571. Okay. It's a little different than the solution, but it might just be a number difference yeah. from the prompt. Okay. Yeah, because maybe something... Oh, that includes the F. Sorry. Oh, okay. Did you not want it without uh, it? Yeah, let's leave it without the F. Oh, 1.152. 1.152. 1 That's, we're going to use that equation to iterate if we change the f. And so then, then we can plug in the value 0 0.03 and get a, as, um, a first value for f is 0 0.03, a value for d. I get um, 0 0.571, yeah, that's what you had. That's in P. And next, we're going to need the, um, so we've got an equation for D as a function of F. Now what we need are equations for Reynolds number and relative roughness as a function of D. Okay? So, Okay, 
that equation. I get uh, 2.6, 2.6 e to the minus 4. All right. And then we need an equation for the Reynolds number as a function of d. And that's a little trickier because we need a velocity. So okay, we put 4q over pi d squared here. something over D, right? So, four times one four. times, say one point four is seven. So we've got a D in, in the denominator. So I get um, 100,810 <laughs> over D. Yeah, 1.0. 10 to the fifth. And that's another equation as a function of d. So we use this equation and that equation that equation, and then the Moody diagram to get a new F. All right. So um, our D, where's our D, is 0.571. go to the Moody diagram from there. I got the Moody diagram here. If you need it oh, to show the diagram, yeah. oh, okay. To yeah, show. Wanna, um, okay. Well, we're gonna um, 
Got it up on the screen. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's here. It's screen sharing, so you can. Yeah, yeah. So if you log into the Zoom call, you can see. Okay. Excellent. So we're looking at the Moody diagram with those previously calculated values for relative roughness, which is 2.6 e to the minus 4, and Reynolds number 1.8 e to the fifth. Okay. So no, that's all right. Uh, so 1.8 e to the fifth is pretty close to 2 e to the fifth, so it's right around there. This is the number we're reading up to. And then going along, I see it 2 times 10 to the fourth, which is right here. Ours is 2.6 times 10 to the fourth. So it's a little higher than that. So the uh, yeah, so I'm getting something right around where that complete turbulence line crosses, right around there of point oh one seven is what I would say. All right, about two e to the fifth, about. Yeah. Yeah. 017, 018, maybe 018. And then from there, you start the next iteration. It's probably going to come out different because we've changed the F by quite a bit. It's, all, it's close to half of what. 60% of what we started with. So we do a point oh one eight. Can you push back to the board? Is it not? Oh. All right, that's as cool. And then it's back to the Moody diagram. All right, so uh, just to show you what I've done here, from the Moody diagram, we got this 018 value. That becomes our next friction factor. We use this equation, plug in that new friction factor to get a new diameter. Then use that new diameter to get a new relative roughness and use that new diameter to get a new Reynolds number, and now we go back to the Moody diameter. Okay, and I can tell you that we're gonna get, we haven't changed the Reynolds number, but just a little bit. And we haven't changed the relative roughness by just, just a little bit. So um, I'm gonna say that we're going to come up with the same, unless we did it wrong, we're going to come up with the same friction factor. Okay, and then that tells us that we've achieved uh, convergence with our iteration. 
and that's our and so that's a little bit more than a six inch pipe you probably have to choose the next commercially you have to go up the next size which is probably an eight inch i guess is i'm not sure if that's the way they wrote it in the solution but there are a limitless supply of commercially available pipes you'd say well i need something at least 0.516 feet in diameter which would be I, I believe it's going to be an eight inch pipe let's see what they say in the solution Yeah, well, they actually calculated that the it'd be a 6.37 inch pipe, which yeah, and they they did it um, in a different fashion. They actually guessed at the pipe diameter and then calculated the pressure drop and just. Guess this size pipe, guess the next size pipe, guess the next size pipe, and look to see what the, the um, pressure drop would be in each instance. That's just a, a different way. That's a guess and check kind of method instead of an iterative method like we've done here. Both, both work. Do we... Um, Do we want to stop there or go on to number six? Whoever suggested it, do we have a number suggestion for six here in the room? No? Okay. So, um, is there still an interest in seeing problem number six? Give me a thumbs up. Oh, I can't see a thumbs up. I'm screen sharing. So. Oh, she's screen sharing. Okay. So, if you would. Um, can they chat? Say yeah. Somebody say yes. Let's see problem six. William. William says, William, you want to see problem six? Yeah, I mean, if possible. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm willing to do it. So, um, hey William, why don't I get, do you have it pulled up, the problem? Yeah, I have it pulled up. Okay, so I see a ski resort, water at 40 degrees Fahrenheit, 3 inch diameter pipe, 2,000 feet long, with an elevation of 4,286 to an elevation of 46. 23 feet at a rate of 0 0.26 cubic feet per second. Maintain a pressure of 180 psi at the snow making machine. Determine the horsepower. To neglect minor losses. Okay? That's a little different than the version I'm seeing on the This to me looks like a type one problem since we know the flow rate. Right, so we're gonna have to, um,
Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, and I think that it's not clear in the problem that they're pulling water out of a reservoir at that lower elevation. Oh, it does say from a pond. Okay. This could be in North Carolina, huh? Says, um, let's see what they use for. So that's going to tell us um, we're going to, from this information, we're going to be able to calculate the head loss due to friction. We get the, the right Q is. the velocity, since we know the Q and then we know the D. We know, so, um, we know epsilon, we know D, we know velocity. Uh, right, we didn't need to get the you have to look up the kinematic viscosity at forty degrees Fahrenheit. That would give you those two numbers. Darcy Weisbach equation, FL over V, V squared over 2G, and 
find that head added by the pump, they call it in this book um, H sub uh, shaft, right? They call it shaft head. It's positive or negative. So well, let's go with there. Find H sub S from the pump. We do that with the energy equation. And then find the power with the pump power equation. Are we given the horsepower added by the pump? Yeah, they, um, apparently it said that it's 100% efficient. So that's the, okay, that's how you do it. Do you want to take it from there, William? Any of that? Um, seem tricky? That you have questions on? Still there? Hey, William, you there? Oh, I, I I was writing things down. I apologize. Oh, that's all right. I was just yeah. Saying. I think from there we can take care of it. You know, it needs help. I can. Get yeah, I don't think there's anything uh, tricky about any of these steps. So unless you feel like you need additional help, I would just leave it there. You know, this is just. Um, Q over A, you know. I'll give you a minus as well, since we're here, 1.664 times 10 to the minus 5. feet squared per second is the kinematic viscosity, which you would just look up in a table. Um, let's see, they came up with a I mean, the values are different, but um, yeah, they came up with F is zero to one, but that might change for yours. And that's yeah, it looks like that might be um, most likely in the, it's a small pipe, so it might be a relatively low Reynolds number. Yeah, 
the Reynolds numbers in the 10 to the 5th range. Okay, shall we leave it there? Yeah, I think that's uh, fine. Okay, good. Good, good.